we will be back. Take Pedro's a- corpse will be desecrated <laughs> and put in front of a camera. So well, I'm just thinking about like the positive and negative, like flying to Portugal to like play that, like at the back. <laughs> Might not be on, safe. on bag on bagpipes okay. badly. <laughs> And welcome back to another Linux Gamecast Weekly. show covers the latest Linux gaming news, reviews, how-tos, and most importantly, whatever the hell else we come up with. I'm Vin, and that is Jordan, and that is Pedro, together with you, Shot Realm Dynamic, watching us live, helping us form Cocaine Voltron. What's up, gentlemen? We got some new things we're playing around with. If the video it kind of explodes, it didn't blow up, I think I finally have VP9 working correctly on our Jitsi server. I think air quotes around that. I'm not 100%. But there's your fair warnings. <laughs> and um, if, you, if you follow me in uh, on Discord earlier today when I get back home, it's like, I'm going to finally make our Star Wars credits into Venture Resolve instead of using this little website that I've been using forever. And uh, stick around for that because it's very much, I want Star Wars credits, mom. And like, we have Star Wars credits. <laughs> we have Star Wars credits They're at like, home. <laughs> it's like, you're going to give me a little gold star on my report. I'm like, and you tried. <laughs> so maybe it'll get better later on. Maybe it won't. Jordan, you're full of soup, my man. I am. It's coming out fart wise. Now the, the I, I, I had, I had a good burn about like, uh, we, we have X at home. We were watching, we were watching Stargate and there was some guy who looks like uh Rick Moranis. I'm like, shit, we have Rick Moranis at home, honey. I shrunk the budget. Um, <laughs> wormhole extreme. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, no, that, 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 that's that one burn is the one thing that happened this week. So uh, uh, there you week. go. Slow week. Slow week. I don't know, weeks for me have been uh, this week. I've been going into the office. That just Friday was the one day that I didn't go into the office. Nothing to do with the seventy-five mile an hour gusts of wind that were happening or anything. I just I'd already done everything that needed to be done for the week. Do you do you so have, do you have, have like a, like a baggy shirt or like a poncho or something? Can you right? like flying squirrel that shit? Probably. I have a coat that's pretty wide. What's your problem? <laughs> no, no. You only have half of that equation. We also need a skateboard. <laughs> I was, I was going to say GoPro. Do you have a GoPro handy? <laughs> I do not have a GoPro. There is one on my um, wish list. If you're feeling particularly generous. Well, yeah, so for my, what? You, what are you going to yeah, do? Th- th- throw, <laughs> throw a wingsuit on there and then, then we're fucking talking. No, Pedro no, 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 no. Now, now I'm looking forward to like Pedro's GoPro footage is like getting up and going, making some tea, coming back, sitting down. We can put some like extreme. I can cut the shit out of it, man. Make it like extreme. Oh, no, it's, out. It's, 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 it's the live action version of the Stanley parable, but it's the one where you just hide in the closet until the narrator gives up. <laughs> <laughs> it's the introvert version. Yes. It's, it's just me sitting right here. But yeah, no, I spent the rest of the week uh, basically finishing this. It's the uh, Toshiba NB550D. It's now looking resplendent and uh, um, color matched and things are actually, you know, as they should be without How, how many of those do you have now? cracks? Uh, uh, NB550s? I only have the one. Okay. But well, I also have so an NB520. I was just going That's to say. That's where all from, the broken bits went. <laughs> from somebody who just... What's going to burgle your house? How many of those same looking things do you have? Like two or three? This one that has the AMD APU and the 520, which has the Atom N550. You, you're going to overclock it? You're going you're to have the most powerful netbook on the block? Oh, yeah. Uh, no, I, I, I need a completely different netbook for that. It's the 1015 uh, triple EPC PN. Yes. But those are unicorns. They 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 don't exist. <laughs> well, you you can have the next best thing. You just gotta overclock that CPU to like what what one one point two gigahertz. That's the thing. It's already Optimism. a dual core one gigahertz AMD APU. <laughs> oh, okay. okay. I, I was Dremel. expecting like nine hundred megahertz. Yeah, let's like, get some water. Yeah. No, that th- th- those are the seven hundreds. The seven hundred one uh, triple EPCs. Those are um, nine hundred megahertz Celerons. You know what? Here's what you can do. Just get a vat of the non-conductive liquid, douse it, SSH into it, and just clock the snot out of it until it melts. Oh, yeah, just mi- mineral oil. <laughs> yeah, just things. drop it in. <laughs> but I, I I, made them look so nice. I I, I don't want to drown them. <laughs> you got you to gotta, you gotta lube them up, Pedro. <laughs> <laughs> like the horse. You got you to gotta loop it and dunk it, just like the horse. I don't think I have anything to top that. So it's the steam. Oh, oh, dang. Dang. Oh, oh, yeah, 
<laughs> Lu- Lubin and Duncan, baby. We're Duncan off to Lubin. a rip roaring good and start. Hey, take it over to the old Lubin and Duncan. Uh, 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 America runs on Duncan Lube. <laughs> <laughs> Things you might not want to loop up, up to and including the Steam Deck. Yes, yes, yes. Today, which was not today, it was a couple of days, two days ago. Uh, Steam announced they're announcing that iFixit. You might have heard of them. They make the screwdrivers and things. Will be one of the authorized resellers for the Steam Deck replacement parts, which is neat. And look, uh, iFix is like, hey, let's X-ray this thing, and it looks exactly like it wouldn't look X-rayed. Just a note on that. Now, they do make a point of saying they are going to be one of the authorized resellers. Why am I interested in this? I'll tell you why I'm interested in this. It's effectively going to be like a parts list to see what the common failure points are on the deck as determined mm-hmm. by Valve. You know, that those are replaceable parts, the ones that Valve in their testing, like this is the shit that's going to wear out. So I think that'll be a handy list to have. I, th- I think I think the big one on that is just going to be the joysticks, right? Like, there's there. Yeah, it's been a consistent problem with a lot of the newer the newer controllers that like the joysticks. Dude, my my fucking Nintendo Switch. I'm on my second set of Joy Cons, and I'm getting that uh, Joy Con drift. I got to actually fix it. Uh, but yeah, um, I guess that means it's a, it's a no on replacement unit stock. Then it's uh, if you break it, you gotta you gotta fix that shit on your own. And you know. Uh, apparently, it's a very fixable machine. Uh, the uh, fine folks at iFixit uh, did a separate video where they, unlike the Val video, where there was just a scaremongering and the jumping around and the complete lack of cohesion, uh, they actually went through the whole thing, took everything apart, including the battery out of the slot, and that's the one thing that kind of du- uh, ducked the score a little bit because it is proper glued in place so and it's very very hard to actually I'm get like it you, out Pedro. i'm exactly like you i want my battery bouncing around when i'm <laughs> That's jingle, jingle jingle you can yeah, uh, pick it back. i, you I can want the one the block of ion lithium a... that you genuinely cannot put out once it ignites to be nice and mobile <laughs> inside my case you can make a battery stay in place without gluing it as much as Valve did, at least for the pre-production units. It remains to be Internet seen. Internet engineers, actual... kids. You gotta use staples. Yeah. Uh, the, uh, as someone who's taken apart many, many laptops with built-in batteries, yeah. Uh, the, uh, the one thing that interested me was the little foil jacket around the SSD. It's like, yeah. can, can we repurpose that? Nope. Because, yes, if that is there for the interference to avoid interference with the Wi-Fi. Keeps out the brain worms. I, can, can we repurpose that? Is If we want to add our own SSD, can we just use that? No. It's like one. it's that adhesive that like you can't fucking get it off without like shredding the back of it. Yeah, it's going to be that. I don't know. <laughs> I'll make my own. I have some aluminum tape and some Captain Tape, so I, I'll make yeah, my own. I, 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 got, I, got, I got some tinfoil, too, yeah. <laughs> yeah is, it'll be brilliant. So w- what do we think about this, though? Let's look at like what Steam is doing, what Valve is doing with, oh, yeah, here's user serviceable parts. You know, if you're brave enough to you know take some screws out and do this, compared to, Jordan, you can speak to this. Nintendo, let's say I have an issue with one of my Joy-Cons. I want to head over to iFixit and go to the Nintendo Switch section to get an easily replaceable part. No? I, well, I got, first off, I got to buy the special screwdriver that Nintendo uses. That's, uh, Do they still that, use that, a triangle? <laughs> I, you know, you know what? I haven't looked close enough at my Joy-Cons to check. I've, I, I've, I've recently gotten to that point. Um, although I, I too have a set of like fat joy cons for large handed individuals on my wish list. So, uh, Amazon.com. Re- get that. Hero- Valve is doing the right thing. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And this is not something is. the like, market is accustomed to, but Valve knows their audience. So indeed, uh, speaking, speaking of audience, uh, once that deck comes out, they're going to have a brand new version of proton to play with version seven is out. Oh my God. Uh, we've seen a little bit of the previews with that, uh, from the glorious egg roll side, uh, updating, uh, his branch to wine seven. Uh, but here we are. Uh, and it looks like we have some cool stuff like, Turning on the the EAC stuff for Star Wars Squadrons. Apparently, it wasn't Yay. just the library that needed to be there. It wasn't just the button that needed to be pressed online. There was actually a thing, a feature flag in Proton that needed to be enabled to turn on the EAC support properly. 
And so here we are. Uh, so that that's that's a thing. There's there's a bit of a bug with that, but we're going to talk about that with the experimental release. Uh, yeah. So our lesson here is, I guess we got to stick with the uh, official announcements when we're uh, when we're talking about Easy Andy Cheat. It's a little easy to jump the gun because we're like, oh my god, new games multiplayer on Linux, but. We were a little bit of an eager beaver. Um, also, a bunch of the uh, a bunch of the stuff from Experimental is now in mainline, including the uh, performance optimizations. So yeah, you can go play some games with it. It took a minute to show up. We got this announcement. When was the announcement for this? Um, Early, earlier in the week. The yeah, four Thursday? days ago. Wednesday ish. Four Wednesday days ago ago. from time of <laughs> recording. It took like two days for it showed up on my Steam. I was in the beta client and immediately, you know, you just go and type in Proton. Like, there's all the other Protons. Um, then it finally showed up. My, it, it runs Trackmania just fine, which is what I was curious about. I'm like, okay, that's fine. Now, the EAC stuff, I still think it's valuable to keep a track on who's playing with it. Because as you said, Jordan, that doesn't give you the guarantee that it will even see the light of day. But mm-hmm. I want to see more and more companies going, is it really that easy for us? Do we just have to cut this on? Is it just going to work? And um, unless you're a uh, Vermintide crew. Mm. <laughs> uh, no, I, that, I don't want to rebuild my game. Quiet now. <laughs> After Valve calling them out and saying, uh, no, that's not what you do. This is what you Maybe do. Maybe we had some but outdated yeah. information. Shut up. Leave us <laughs> the, uh, no, the... Valve uh, basically just took the previous experimental as a whole and turned it into Proton 7, which is very, very nice. And they did need to do a bit more stuff on their end for uh, EAC and Proton, which I'm glad that they did. And, um, you know, the Gabe Gear is coming out on the 25th. So, uh, yeah. I can <laughs> that finally needs play to be in Apex place. <laughs> Legends, the game that I chose with my 2060. That was my free game. Sweet. Yeah. You know, try, try it out. Maybe, maybe it'll be your shit. Well, Who here's knows? the, here's the thing, man. I learned my lesson. I redeemed that code. Why? Because when I bought the 980, it came with like two free games with like a scratch off thing that I punched the code in. Mm-hmm. And I find when Proton came in, I'm like, wait a minute, I have a Batman game and something else. I, and it said that's expired. So I, I have a copy of Apex Legends <laughs> that I don't care about playing, but damn it, I'm going to play it at least once, hopefully, with EAC. And, is it free now? Right, I, it, I think Apex it is Legends free, free now. now, yeah. <laughs> it, 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 it's, it's, the, it's the thing with, like, the free games that come with your shit, right? Like, I, I got Witcher 3, I got Assassin's Creed, and it's like, yeah, well, shit, if you're going to give it to me, I want to play it. And right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I email I emailed AMD. I'm like, yo, do you like can can I activate this thing over Linux? And they're like, yeah. If you if you you just gotta click on the Windows download button because there's actually a browser version check. <laughs> download the the actual sh file. I'm like, well, that's that's good fucking UI design. Yeah, it is interesting. Now, do we have any more of this wonderful um in this episode of 496 of Proton Gamecast? Um. Yes, yeah, we do, going. because there's a whole new experimental, because yes, a it is uh, Proton 7. <laughs> Proton 7 was effectively what uh, experimental was, but brought into the Wine 7.0. And now, well, now there's a whole new Proton experimental, starting with, you know, you, the new DX VK and VK did anybody else immediately when they first saw Blood, they're like, oh, oh. No, yeah, <laughs> not that's, that, that one. <laughs> that's, the, that's the JoJo Bizarre Adventure yeah. one, I think, Melty Blood. Yeah, and there's a, a couple of issues there. Uh, I like that they mentioned specifically Dead Cells, you know, the one with the native Linux version. Yes, that Dead Cells. Uh, it was hanging on launch, so are they suggesting that maybe people should be playing it with Proton given that Steam input doesn't work with the native Linux version still? Why would we fix that? It's a feature. It's the Dark Souls of controlling uh, games. Yeah, <laughs> it's that 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 game. Yeah, but yeah, apparently, I guess Valve is just uh, very subtly implying, like, yeah, I'll play that with Proton. Mm. <laughs> yeah, uh, I mean, I mean, they they much rather you do because then they can like fix bugs that developers don't want to control. Uh, but, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but you know, if 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 you. <laughs> Got excited for being able to play Star Wars Squadrons, and then were greeted by a invalid driver um, message when you booted it up. That's fixed in Experimental. Also, uh, there's some space uh, saving sauce in here too, which is going to be handy because there is finite storage on the deck, even with like a 512 SSD and like a terabyte SD card or whatever. I don't even know how big SD cards get anymore. 
Um, but this is, this is a real thing 1. because every time four yeah. terabytes, yeah. dude, well, <laughs> it's it SSD cards. Every time you go to the Googs and you type in a joke number and look, yeah, that's available. I go, oh, yeah. 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 yeah I, I mean, it, it depends like on how much you want to pay for that. Right. Yeah, yeah. You're not going to be able yeah. to afford that, but <laughs> it, it exists. So, yeah, but my, my, my point still stands. You might, you might want to make sure that you're, um, that you're, you're, you're saving space, especially because those Proton versions are pretty chonky. They're they're in excess of a gig each. They are. How do you and think you people got- are going to be using the decks? Because I know there are people that will run out, not run out, but people who will um, deny their children um, university funds and buy like an eight terabyte. <laughs> 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 Micro SD card that like I fries think the in two months. Twenty two thirties, you can yeah. only get four terabyte ones. That's where the cap is currently. Okay. <laughs> Something like that, and try to just dump them just to have everything, just to say they have it. And um, people will probably take my approach. Like I am, I'm fully aware because I have a two hundred and fifty gig SSD that I'm waiting to die, and it won't used as a SIM drive. And I just have like, okay, I'll install this, this, and a couple games. And if I need something, I just download it. So, do you think people are? going to be more focused on getting like the four terabytes two terabytes and try to have everything loaded or I'm like hey this thing has functioning internet so i can just download what i need well uh, it, it, de- it depends on your use case right like if you're in transit a lot yeah. in a place that like if you're if you're flying and you don't have internet or like fast internet downloading games is not that great an idea you want to have some local storage okay. some options well, i'm thinking about it like this is you know when you get like the super chunky games these are usually your triple a double a titles like the big ones that are probably not going to be the best experience in the world on the deck outside of like can this kind of run this that's neat i'll play it on the desktop <laughs> but when you're thinking about indie titles like you can shove a lot of indie titles in 512 yeah, gigs it, 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 yeah again, it really depends on your use case uh i, I can yeah. i can definitely see people in uh, both camps Uh, And there's also very much those kinds of games that, you know, are maybe not AAA, but close enough that people do want to play because they were very much made for the console-like experience. So, Mm -hmm. yeah, I want to play that. (laughs) One one, one other thing that comes to mind, there is a storage tax when it does come to Proton. Uh, In addition to the Wine Prefix, there's the shaders as well. Mm -hmm. So... You know, uh, yeah. Vulcan. Yeah, so you, 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 you want you want to be mindful of the space that you're using on your system with potentially. Planets. I guess you also kind of want large because when you have to, when you have your hands on your deck, um, your the, the Steam Media Player suddenly makes sense. Oh, well, you know, like I can play. Yeah, movies you want to like audio. And, yeah, <laughs> yeah. So have, you, have, you have, have everything over. there, and you don't need to drop into desktop mode and squint while you're trying to figure How out long? where to get the thing. How long? <laughs> Someone make mark of this because I think this might become a thing. We see Netflix on Steam. Well, it already works right? in the Steam browser. Yeah, like yeah. it's it's Chrome, right? It's I, just Chromium. I'm, <laughs> yeah. I'm talking about one straight up optimized for a Steam Deck. Netflix, like, oh, well, some of that yeah, well, yeah just, get, get get 4K on the Steam Deck on it's something that can do more than 720p. Yeah, like okay, yeah, full feature. Yeah. There you go. Uh, Netflix could do that. Mm-hmm. If they got off their ass. <laughs> no. All right. Uh, somebody who did get off their ass is a uh, gentleman yes. behind Proton DB. They've been doing a, a lot of improvements lately. I wonder if there's a certain bit of hardware that's nope. coming out recently that um, may have joke. stimulated that. Uh, but yes, the contribution flow for 2022 is now available for Proton DB. And they are very much trying to streamline the entire reporting process. And I very much agree because uh, more than once, whenever I'm, I want to submit a report for a game that doesn't have any or very, very few uh, I was okay. uh, Oh, you mean this? Okay. I'll type that down. And then two questions later, wait, you're asking for this again. Oh, that's not what you meant. Right. So got to go back, remove the thing from the other field, put it in this one. It wasn't very clear. But they're uh, they're aware of that. They specifically call uh, call that particular issue out, along with the um, differences between just Steam Play. Does it run out of the box? And if you are submitting one that doesn't run out of the box, can you please go back and try to run it out of the box? They're they're very much asking people to do that, which is good, which is very yeah. good, and yeah, <laughs> very much they're, appreciated. They're very good to- changes. <laughs> they're also trying to make it a little more friendly for the tinker stuff as well. They're trying to have some better differentiations mm-hmm. between like tinker to like have a slightly better experience versus tinker to like actually get into the game. Um, 
The one, one other thing I saw that was interesting is they're accepting reports for native clients as well, which is going to be nice, especially <laughs> because as time goes on, we're going to need some CLI magic to get some of those older games running. It's good. To, and th that, that was one of the things they added is the ability to copy the launch options for on a per game basis. So having, having a good repository for that will uh, help extend the life of some of those less than supported games that maybe you don't want to run on proton just yet. Um, also the other cool thing, anti cheat, uh, they're deriving that from the steam DB stuff now. So oh, nice. it's not a, it's not going to be a manual report. So hopefully one, once it starts getting, um, once like games start turning on the anti cheat stuff, we'll just get a report of it in, in steam. DB. It's good to see the quality proton. stack up on this because like the, Usability of ProtonDB once they did the, you know, system check, hardware check, just to verify that mm -hmm. you weren't writing fanfic. You know, the mm -hmm. <laughs> this game runs horribly, never could get it to run hours played, like 400, like that type of stuff. Or, you know, this doesn't run on my 3080 Ti system checks, you know, um, like 480. Yeah. <laughs> I, I actually, uh, one, one, one neat thing is they're also differentiating playtime between Linux playtime and Windows playtime as okay. well. So that's going to help with that as yes. well. <laughs> That's going to be interesting. So you can actually get a proper bit of information from the report that the person submitted. Mm -hmm. It's nice. Yeah. <laughs> Good times. Good times. And it's a very, very valuable resource. Um, oh, yeah. TV. I mean, that is the place I go when something doesn't work out of the box and yep. find the users. Like, hey, there's a fix and making that easier. All for it. Now, we do have but a couple what I was just going to say, what would be really neat is like a Steam plugin that hooks into that to actually like pull in the, the launch data. It would be really handy for something like uh, the Steam Deck, where you can just press a button and pull that down. Oh, man. What if it comes full circle and um, Valve just starts pulling off of um, Steam DB? <laughs> it's, 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 it's the fucking Ouroboros. Yeah. <laughs> where, 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 where's the source of truth? I don't know. I mean, th that is the ideal world right there, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, I want to see how accurate the um verified working is going to be you know and, yeah no like mm -hmm. some titles yeah. like uh because i mean there are things uh, I, I saw strider like yeah this says this wouldn't work it's rubbish but it's checking for things like proper gamepad support that's not yeah there. you don't and, get a pass. at least two of the games that strider mentioned on that one is like yeah they don't support controllers mm -hmm. at all yeah the the, the, the <laughs> game we're looking at this week uh, is not going to pass that well, test that's because you've uh, not used my custom printed um steam deck with a full-size 104 key keyboard that's shut up smack zero <laughs> you're not going to trick me a second time can i trick you're you into playing the latest update for ziggurat i mean maybe it's not a bad game but they got a they got update number nine out um on the our game update segment uh so they added four more starter weapons that are unlocked right away including miemia mjolnir the the <laughs> smashy hammery bit that thor has um and they added a photo mode if you want to take pictures of little carrot men running at you if that's what gets your rocks off uh but yeah uh there, there's um they added a couple uh, gameplay balances. You joke um, about the carrot guys, but man, that put a smile on my face when I saw the first one when we were doing. Yeah, they're the just like, ah, oh, okay. yes, yeah. carrot guys are back. <laughs> <Yep>. Yeah, <laughs> and, and the uh, yeah. Uh, the one that stood out to me was uh, adjusted a bunch of unpopular perks to make them more interesting. So all but two of them, uh, outside of the ones that increased your mana pool and the one that gave you more. Um, Stamina. Max health. Snacks. Everything else was terrible. It was just god awful to the point where whenever I leveled up in the game, it's like, uh, do I have to pick one? Is there an option to like skip basic, without basic picking wand a perk attack speed because they're all because shit? <laughs> the 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 basic wand perks were actually pretty decent because once you run out of ammo, that's like the one thing you have, and mm. yeah, the, having that being able to do like decent amount of damage was was pretty helpful. Uh, I, don't I, I don't know. I'm like, okay, they rebalance things. That's neat. I mean, they rebalance things, and I heard they rebalance things in Cybertruck. <laughs> oh, that, that was a big, yeah. Because I tuned into Jordan Stream. Use my fucking I, sword I, I, anymore. Uh, this is the I nailed it on the point because you were legitimately being angry on the stream. You were cross. I I was I was very <laughs> upset that I spent all of my resources. I was like, I'm gonna put all of my eggs in the sword basket. I'm just, and then they're like, "Lol, you can't use your sword anymore." Patch 1.5. Fuck you. Okay, uh, I, I cut on the stream, and I, I was like, "Fuck, <laughs> this is bullshit." What? I'm like, I did not for one second did I thought this was game related. I'm like, something fucked up at work, and you just got a notification. Like, you just then I. 
I might, you know, I, I reach over and get yeah. popcorn as a good friend would do. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> then it's like, oh, it sorts. Got it. Okay. I, yeah. Um, I actually, I actually looked up a walkthrough of what the fuck I was supposed to do. Yeah. They're, they're, the, the, the game does, the game does a really bad job of communicating what it expects of you sometimes. Mm. And if the, if the, the, if the little dotted line says go here, I assume it means go there, not fuck off over here and find the secret passageway that you're supposed Tune to Tune in through. on Thursdays and watch Jordan yes. play some Cybertruck because you get little oh. things like last time I tuned in and Jordan's like, there's some people, I'm going to go kill them. Oh, I guess I didn't need yep. to kill them. You know what? Then I, they needed killing. Yep, they deserved <laughs> it. That's fine. <laughs> Um, but you know, you know, speaking of people who deserve to die, let's talk about gene shift, not GTA. Yes. <laughs> it's, uh, absolutely not GTA, but, uh, with a heavier, uh, focus on the multiplayer, unless you mean GTA five, at which point, uh, yeah, you probably already do that. The, yeah, no gene shift, uh, it's been around for a long, long time. And this update is called infinite shifting. And, uh, yes, the, the mechanic of gene shift is is very much the little dodge move that you can do to negate damage that you take. And it used to be uh, limited. You could only do it like three times and then, nope, can't do it anymore. So if you ran out of shifts, you couldn't do the little dodge moves anymore and you would just die whenever someone shot you with something. Now you can keep shifting, but each shift uh, consumes health after the first three. So that's the big change. Uh, And... That's okay. That's a compromise. You lose some health, but you don't die because you got shot with, um, I think the example they give is the bazooka. You got shot with a bazooka. So, um, that's good. That's very good. Mm. And it's a sizable, um, change log. I went through the whole thing. It's like, that's, that's a lot of changes. That's a lot of changes for a game. That's been around for a long, long time. A lot of rebalancing, a lot of gameplay changes, uh, like each individual mechanic, like the chemicals and the weapons and everything has been tweaked slightly. So, uh, kudos that that's that's impressive i was kind of surprised i was a little shocked you know they were they're calling this infinite shifting i was like this isn't surprisingly not about how long this game's been in early access and this game pre predates early <laughs> access back in the days when it was called greedy car thieves and doesn't um, it predates predate us technically mm, i it, i wouldn't put money on that either way i would have to go back and like maybe yeah. <laughs> But it's always been an interesting game. And uh, apparently, as we learned in the pre-free super shows, none of us own it, but I would have. Would have. I, I remember oh. playing the original what, version. What, what, put money on that. Yeah, I would have. Yeah. Guaranteed we all had a copy of it. Apparently we don't. I really think there might be some keys for it laying around somewhere. But for some reason in my brain, maybe we'll pick it up and play around with it. It could be an awesome, awesome, fun game. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's, it's 10 bucks now. So and 10 bucks. Not too bad. Currently, yeah. price to sell. Early access. Mm. All right. Well, <laughs> coming up next, we gotta we gotta save up all the tinfoil from those uh, from those solid state drives because we gotta wrap it around our heads because we're talking about Intel release dates for the GPUs. Ooh. Oh boy, they're they're coming. We could just start the news by debating semantics, but I don't think we're at that point just yet. Maybe another couple of episodes. Uh, if you'd like to, you know, support this particular brand I mean, of insanity. listen, man, you're just saying, like, if a dwarf <laughs> walks into, uh, like, and he's clearly, clearly, like, got his pickaxe and stuff. He's been doing dwarf mining. Dig, 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 digging a hole. Dig, dig, yeah, you, digging, would, you would deny many, many this holes? guy or gal a refreshing alcoholic beverage? Are they, oh, wait, when does a dwarf, no, when is, no, like, no. fantasy... <laughs> Here, here's the thing are all dwarves minors some some of them are administrators some of them are yeah, soldiers some of them have to be blacksmiths uh some of them have to like be interior decorators i okay. mean those great halls aren't going to design <laughs> but, themselves but it, wouldn't it be fair to say all dwarves are minors at heart <laughs> but that's my question when does that, that, a, that's are a, you that's calling, a sweeping wait a minute <laughs> sir sir are you calling minors heartless Yes. <laughs> no, I, I'm calling into question when do dwarves grow from being Listen, minors man. to adults? Oh, 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 okay, all right, all right. I, 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 Any I more straw man arguments, something's going to catch. 
on fire. I, 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 gotta, I gotta put the kibosh on this. Apparently, we gotta start a Lord of the Rings podcast, so if you wanna fund that, you should head on over to patreon.com slash the next gamecast. Probably we're gonna put that up as a goal as we fucking do deep drives, dives into Lord of the Rings. And deep drive. I, Hong Kong. Deep drive. Deep, deep driving through Middle Earth. Man, hey, out of the way, Gandalf. Hong Kong smash. Uh, yeah. So, a so a Wait a minute. Can you put a spoiler on a horse? <laughs> Shout out, spoiler facts. Yeah, probably. Yeah. <laughs> oh man, but but before we actually run over <laughs> Ian McKellen, patreoncom slash Gamecast, Sign up. You get some cool stuff. You get access to our Discord channel. You can also get access to that by subbing to us on Twitch, which you should be watching us on right now. Twitch.tv slash Uh You can get access to our show notes, access to the Trackmania shit that Ven does on Tuesdays and Fridays. Uh, you can even you buy your way onto Google. the show. <laughs> run, run, run over you. No. No, 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 no Gandalf drive by. What are you talking about, you monsters? I'm looking for a horse. A spoiler. <laughs> okay. That, that, that is going to very quickly devolve into porn. <laughs> By the way, we have a store. Store.linuxgamecast.com. Safe search on. Safe search on. Yeah, you can search that with safe search on. We don't have LGC strap-ons yet, but we do have t-shirts. We do have stickers. We have coffee mugs. We got, uh, are, are, are the masks back or we just got hoodies? Just nope. hoodies. Just hoodies. Just hoodies. Well, you know, you can you can cover yourself in LGC apparel. Rohit, one of our, one of our intrepid fans, did that in New Orleans yes. and didn't get stabbed, <laughs> which is amazing. <laughs> Because, because you, you know, if someone like, sees right, Rohit, right, just chat, show us your tits. Here's what I can say. Yeah. Here's what I can say. Like, I can extrapolate right, right, from right this situation that we have proof that the LGC T-shirts are stab proof. Yeah, because uh, like <laughs> I again, don't see any tigers. Well, right, you, 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 you can aim for yeah. right between my eyes, right in the unibrow, and you, you, can, you can get them right through the chest. Um, <laughs> Uh, we, we, we got, we got wish zones as well. Uh, also fair to- warning. Yes. If you do post a picture of yourself wearing our merch in discord, you'll end up on the show, like it or not. Um, yeah. Mo- models. Yeah. What, but why male, mo- <laughs> male models? Yeah. Uh, go to Linux put your mouse over the support button. We got, I got a wish list. Ben has, a what wish is list. this? Pedro has one. Uh, those are those, uh, fat hand joy. Oh, like, yeah. Super chunk. The yeah. hoary, um, yeah. Clicky yeah. pads. I, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, I got, I got, I got some five thousand, five hundred dollars, no, five hundred dollar audio cables and three thousand dollar audio cables, <laughs> an RGB sound card. Then has some actual <laughs> stuff that he wants to put in the studio. I don't know what Pedro has. Pedro has like Nori stuff on there for some reason. Sandpaper. She's all. I do. Boy likes sandpaper. I mean, <laughs> she, 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 his girlfriend likes to pick locks because that man cannot have any privacy. <laughs> yeah, I can't lock myself in the bathroom anymore. She just. Fix the lock. <laughs> All right. So, hey, thanks for letting us do this and uh, make it possible. Loud Live, independent. And we do mean that because you, no commercial breaks. You can head over to linuxemcast.com without ad block enabled because you know what? There's no ads on there. Nobody's tracking you. We just got this out. We release everything under Creative Commons. It's yours. So, um, yeah, stick around. I made a new thing with OBS. More on that at 11, but we got to talk about your new GPU. The blue, totally balls. <laughs> the blue balls Everyone. from company blue. And I'm talking about this fucking art. God damn it. Until just fucking give us some digits. Let us know. No, I got to tickle your balls a little bit more. <laughs> you fucking tease. Uh, arc update. Alchemist laptops, Q1 desktops, Q2, 4 million GPUs total for 2022. Um, yeah. I mean, we're just like reading through this. Uh, basically what that means is sometime between the month organs of April and June, We'll get some desktop GPUs that we can kind of get excited about. Hopefully, you know, I don't Maybe. know if I'm going to be able to resist the temptation. And that's a long wait. Can I resist that temptation to buy a $300 GPU with a $400 markup for another two months until, <laughs> I mean, that's going to be get, very, we, we, very difficult. We, 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 we got to see what those, uh, those early benchmarks are saying, I guess. Yeah. But still no, still no, no word on how much cash I can. Are the, are those benchmarks. Yeah. Basically, you have to outperform a seven hundred dollars thirty sixty. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. So <laughs> and no, no, yeah, no, that's no word. the only thing we've seen thus far. <laughs> yeah, no, no word on price. Uh, even, and even I was going to say, even even like uh, fake MSRB, like yeah, we can we can tack a two hundred fifty percent markup on there and assume what that's what we'd actually be paying. Um, but yeah, we we got we got a bit of uh, the roadmap as well. Uh, with uh, the enthusiast things coming with Celestial in mm-hmm. 2024. So that's going to be the really fuck you expensive stuff. And we know Intel, they, they know how to write a fucking price sticker that shoes everyone <laughs> away. It, well, hey, you can look at it like this. What did it take about two years before Intel went? Wait a minute. We can't sell these four 
core four thread CPUs at a premium anymore. Wait, 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 wait. <laughs> it, it took. Wait, all- we used to be able to charge a thousand dollars for our six core, and AMD is now selling them for a hundred and fifty. To turn that corporate ship around just to get things recalibrated <laughs> to the current market took almost two years for a moment. Okay, fine, we can do this. And maybe maybe we can compete on price. Well, maybe. here's the thing. Here's here's what I'm thinking. Using the same logic is they have to compete on price on day one. No, uh, mm-hmm. but they got to compete against real world pricing, you know. So here's the thing, though: if they can keep it in stock and keep it with you know lower than what you know uh, sc- at what we need to call it, the scalpers um, SSRP, scalpers delight. yeah, the SSRP, <laughs> um, a little bit lower than that, by you know, and have it in stock, even when or if you know normalcy returns to us, it's still going to take them that long to get their product stack like repriced to fuck you because that's why pricing. Yeah. And it's, 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 it's going to be interesting on the next side. Cause we know, we're, we know we're going to get drivers pretty early on because, mm-hmm. uh, it, uh, in, or that Linux. I keep wanting to say it, it, in, Intel, uh, or Nvidia Intel wants to, wants to corner that server market, right? Like Nvidia has that covered. They Intel would love to make a dent in that with some enterprise grade GPUs. Uh, but yeah, and even like, on the user the, side, uh, if you're one of those people that really cares about the open sourciness of things, mm-hmm. the Intel drivers for their dedicated GPUs would be the 100% open source drivers. <laughs> Here's what I want, though, man. Here's what I want. I want my AMD Threadripper, and I want my Intel Display GPU, and I want my NVIDIA NV and Code GPU in the same system just to piss everyone off. <laughs> but... <laughs> so, so here, here's here's the other thing um, that popped in my head: ACO. Um, that that will work for uh, any Mesa based driver. So yes, th- th- or it can be implemented for any Mesa based driver. Mm-hmm. So I'm really interested to see if like in, if Intel can come out with like a really high performance GPU. Plus, we get optimized shader compiling. We could get some pretty good performance gains under Linux. It's, Even yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> the, the the possibilities are there. We just need to fucking see the cards, man. Show us the cards. That's it. Give me something between three and four hundred dollars, like right now, tomorrow. Call me up during the show, and I will send you that check immediately, just to be done with it. But yeah, because what are we doing? We're sitting around waiting for prices. Because I'm not paying seven hundred dollars for a fucking thirty sixty, just on principle. <laughs> even uh, even if it's the, the only Intel thirty sixty. Oh yeah, fair, fair point. I mean, yes. If uh, Intel's like, got you, got you, bro. Six ninety nine. Like, get fucked. I can wait. Um. Yeah, no. We also haven't seen a lot of leaks. Yes, there's been the pictures of the shroud, and there was that one leak of the um, compute performance versus the thirty seventy. Mm-hmm. But yeah, if if Q two uh twenty twenty two starts at the end of next month. So those uh, professional leakers, chop, chop, get to it. <laughs> I try start, to watch start, them. Start leaking on us, baby. <laughs> who, who was yeah. the guy, what was it, Adored Tech that did the leaks? And there's like- Adored more, TV, yeah. The, Moore's the Law is covers dead. a lot of leaks, mostly uh, biased towards AMD. And Moore's Law yeah. is dead or like the two, because mm-hmm. I, I always have a good laugh when I listen to those because they talk about like, my leaks are better than the competition's leaks, let me tell you. <laughs> Come on, man. Just, just don't. Oh, I got this really exclusive leak. Uh-huh. It's literally a pissing contest. It, it is literally it is fucking a adorable contest. to listen to. Um, what do we have up let's next? Talk, let's talk Enchanted. about alcoholism. Enchanted bottles, man. That's not alcoholism. If it's fantasy, it's fantasy alcoholism. It's release day for what? Usebottles.com. Surprisingly not pornographic. However, there is a new <laughs> update. Uh, <laughs> bunch of things in this this is the wine bottle manager and this goes through all the, the stuff that's going on one thing i didn't like in this is there's an update to the task manager so i like the ability to use that and nuke one applications from orbit i thought that was pretty slick they got the one click installer going on they heard pedro the xdg <laughs> data home default for the bottle pass so you can find them thank you oh man <laughs> it's located under dot snap but uh yeah and they have done you the favor of shoving everything into a flat pack if you want it, which neat. It's, it's which it's if handy. you already it, have it turns on flat packs installed, yeah. Did I mention the app <laughs> yeah. store? There's also an app store. Mm-hmm. Yeah, the 
yeah, the, uh, the, the flat pack install, uh, enables like the full sandboxing stuff, which is handy when you're running wine mm-hmm. games. Cause you don't want the, the whole, yeah, let's run wine as root thing. <laughs> um, yeah, it's, but like if, if you're, if you're looking for like not Lutris, this is, this is definitely a, a compelling alternative. Um, yeah, it this seems one pretty, is specifically it's fully, fully for true. wine. <laughs> yeah. Hey, look, they even uh, have like their own dumb little internal naming thing, like orange juice, apple juice, mango juice, pear juice, coconut juice, juice, juice. <laughs> melon juice now this is what i want to see i i want this in proton and steam because how many times have you had like that errant fucking program that wouldn't die and you're in top and like all right C- where are C- you C- at Cyberpunk. motherfucker oh, okay yeah i i like I the idea of having a, a task manager built in. <laughs> that kills all of the running wine servers regardless of where they were started from so i just do control cool. uh meta k mm. and it kills all running wild applications <laughs> Yeah, the, I, I just uh, sage kill all wine. <laughs> That'll do it. But, you know, I will ah, say again. Not always. <laughs> not all. The, when the, I the see something like this, Proton this doesn't immediately kill that. hits me up with like, yes, good use for flat pack. I want all that shit contained in like its own little, mm-hmm. like, because when I am done with it, I want to discard of it and make sure it's all gone. <laughs> mm-hmm. yep. Yeah. Cool. No, it's, 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 a, it's a good way to um, make using wine a little easier, especially for people who are trying to transition off of uh, Windows. What if there was more bash in it? Well, then if, if it was a little more complicated, maybe, maybe you wanted to execute bottles through Lutris. Uh, you could look at the heroic bash launcher. So this is kind of neat. It's a utility that uh, generates shell scripts that contain all the necessarily run options to launch a game. So you can stick it in uh, Steam, Lutris or Steam. Uh, this primarily uses uh, heroic. It'll search the heroic databases. It's because normally you have to like give it a game ID or something. And that's a little cumbersome. This aims to simplify all of that stuff. It'll spit out, uh, up, like under heroic launcher, like a rocket league.sh or a apex legends.sh that has all the override shit. And then you can just, uh, add a external application to, um, steam or Lutris and do it. The GUI is all done through Zenity. Uh, so it uses that if you have some sort of ideological opposition to Zenity as a bash GUI manager, I don't know. <laughs> it's like, it, 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 it's, it's, it, and it, it is a Python program too, by the way. Uh, but yeah, it's, it's pretty handy. Uh, especially if you're, uh, you want to have everything just launchable through Steam. That is, yeah, <laughs> very, very good. <laughs> and the, the the one thing that jumped out at me was the <laughs> the one bullet point. Alerts the user if a program fails to execute. If a game's launch parameter, che- uh, parameter settings checking fails. You'd think, you know, this being 2022 current mm-hmm. year argument, that that would be expected functionality. <laughs> It's like, I tried to launch a thing. It didn't. Let, oh, thanks for letting me know. <laughs> Steam, no, listen, Steam doesn't even fucking implement that. You click play. <laughs> that, that's and the then joke it's like, there. Yeah, like, let's, 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 be, let's be real. Listen, it's it, like, uh, this you is try 100%. to launch it, it starts and well, goes away. There's the Nothing. start time to H top. <laughs> yes. Yes. <laughs> that, that, that's how it runs. Like, are you doing something? The only I, I got reason the little CPU monitor on the side and I just checked to see if that spikes up before maybe uh, CPU monitor <laughs> back in the day. It was uh, the sole reason that I would have like the hard drive LEDs plugged in at all for any reason. Just, 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 like, just to see if it's actually doing are something. Are you thinking, are you doing a thing now? It's just, just straight to H top, you know, after like, w- w- what is your time? I would say like nine to 10 seconds max. Especially like yeah. Yeah, yeah. 10 seconds like, is usually pushing it. If I don't see at least like a window, Attempting to installing DC blurring the compositor. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) If you don't, sometimes you'll forget that motherfucker come up and surprise you next day, not next day, but like Mm -hmm. a minute or two later. It's like boom, like what the Oh, there you are. I, or or, I. or you, you 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 bring up the terminal to kill it, kill the process, (laughs) and then it pops up just as you hit enter, you're like, motherfucker. Right. Okay. We learned a thing. This is an amazing project. It really is. Yeah. It, it is yeah. the, uh, the 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 pros of open source game development doing it in the open. Veleron they have a new release out. This is the Not Twelve uh, release. Uh, they've been working on it for the past five months, and it's the waterfalls and wall running updates. Uh, they they added waterfalls and they added wall running, but at what cost? You might ask. They changed the Yeti loot table. Those fucking bastards. I hate them forever. The game's on play <laughs> now, but. Uh, th- this this is a big chunky update. They have a lot of stuff. They um they fixed crafting. Uh, hey, they used DaVinci Resolve for this. I know that trend. Hey, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, 
there, there, there's some, um, you, you can't fall through airships while you're flying anymore, which I assume is pretty handy for staying on airships. Uh, creatures will defend their pets. Uh, yeah, there's, there's a bunch of stuff and they've been pretty actively developing it. They're doing performance improvements. They're doing like gameplay features. And it's really cool because it's like, it started off being like just Minecraft Breath of the Wild and it's turned into like this really cool MMO into thing. its own game. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Well, I mean, if you want to sail back, boats now, <laughs> you think about like when we first started playing around with it, uh, at least first time I launched it, I wouldn't say it was Minecraft. I mean, it was barely Minecraft to begin with, you know, with a different coat of paint on it. But the evolution of this is just amazing to watch. You know, now you got sailing. You can even run into a talking river. Rivers make noise now. And um, ride up bugs. And, but most bugs. importantly, to bury <laughs> the lead. Bugs. To bury Exploding the lead. Bugs. Fuck mothering arthropods and which that's probably why you need that wall running which has been added and so yeah, yeah pretty to, tight. to skip the grabwids for sure well here's the thing or so that they can come from the walls <laughs> we're looking at an open source project and i want you to think about just visually how good this looks i mean this i will say this is the best looking open source game that i currently uh, no. know of it knocked zero AD off the fucking pedestal. That's for sure. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> it, I mean, the amount did. of shaders, even with the voxely uh, aesthetic. If you look at one of the screenshots with like the shaders all cranked to max and everything looking really pretty, that's a mighty good looking game. That's yeah. The, very the, the, well the water effects, <laughs> the the, yep. the fluid dynamic effects are really not, yeah. Like it's 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 been a trip watching this thing develop, and I've, and it's online these guys with online multiplayer, which I hear is impossible for yes, yeah. right? Yeah, no, and you, you, you can you can get it through it. a flat pack, so you can just pull it and run it <laughs> right. It's good. So I make a thing. I got a new series I've been playing around with because you know they need to get made, and uh, it's called OBS Linux Basics. Trying to get people up to speed, common questions, things I get asked, things I see show up in the OBS Discord that get answered a million times over and over and over. I want to make something nice and searchable. You know, I've done things like OBS Virtual Cam, OBS First Time Install, setting up HDMI encoders and recorders and all that fun stuff. Now, I have the multi-track audio recording because this has probably happened to you if you are a streamer or anyone who uses OBS and you record two sources. Say you're recording your voice and you're recording game audio, or say I'm recording my voice and I'm also recording Jordan's voice. By default, OBS is going to mix all that down to one track, one stereo pair. So you come to find out after the thing's over, if you're done playing the game or you're done talking with somebody, you check the audio levels and one's way too loud, one's way too quiet. What can you do about that? Not much. Not much. Um, you can make the problem louder or quieter, and that's about it. So this, this one easy trick, you can just kind of walk through and tell it, hey, I want to record this source on one audio track. I want this source on another audio track. And hey, just keep going up to six, which is something you can do. So that way, in your recording, you need to fix something in post. You drag it into KDN Live. You drag it into OpenShot and DaVinci. It's going to have your video, and it's going to have all your individual audio levels there for you to play around with. You know, and that's it's what it's I also do. handy. It's also handy if you're on Twitch because they have the DMCA second track thing as well. Uh -huh. So if you if you don't you want to get your uh, entire actually, bot there's muted. a tick box. Yep. To specify that. Yep. <laughs> so head over to LinuxGameCast.com. There's a handy video. It's like five minutes long because my inspiration I ran into today was watching a 15 minute long video about how to do the Star Wars credits and seeing another one that was like 12 and another one that was 20 minutes. And they didn't address what I was trying to get accomplished. So when I see stuff like that, that's my inspiration to make these five minute long. Hey, this is how you do this, this, this done Bye, peace. And uh, yeah, yeah. See, see the end results of that. Stay tuned. <laughs> so, I, I, I don't speak to the quality, um, but I know how to do it now, so it might get better. Judge, judge for yourself. Right. All right. Coming up next, it's time to drink from our sippy cups. We gotta, we gotta go get some. More. We gotta collect cups. Our cup flowed but, over again. Yeah, with more cups. You me so dog. You can't see me pee because I see you pee. This week we're taking a look at Quest of Growl, done Growl, done by the Pixel Archipel. 
um, aka Theo Min, I believe, uh, Theo Min, I'm not sure how to pronounce your name, I'm sorry, done on the Godot engine. You can pick it up for about 999 of your particular currency. No regional pricing here. Uh, what is it? Race up to four players in this frantic combat platformer. Dash through 20 stages, wield magical items, use the power of golden statues to overcome monsters, beat your opponents, and catch the cup first. But you might also ask, what the hell am I watching? This is the Chairquisition. This is where we take a game, run it on some different, different Linux distributions, uh, with some very similar hardware, at least until Q2 2022, right. apparently, if if, mm-hmm. uh, if Intel's marketing <laughs> is to be believed. Um, and, you know, we, we, we rate them on our, um, on our holy grail of rating systems. The sun growl, the lawn chairs. Uh, one one chair means that it's crap. Four chairs means that it's amazing. You can figure out the other two values. I hope if you can count. Let's get into it then. Oh, we got we got to thank uh, we got to thank Pixel Archipel for sending us keys on Creator Connect. Curator Connect. So yes. uh, yeah, then on uh, Debian, how did uh, how to do? Let's start that boom clock. All right, Debian eleven out of the box, man. No problems. I'm gonna run it on 1920x with a NVIDIA 2060 displayed at UHD, sometimes 720p. Unfortunately, everything launched. You know, the correct screen. Bonus. I didn't have to look over to my left, but it wasn't a wee 720p window. Option B for your resolution is full screen. That's it. Exclude controller worked kinda, kinda. Because um, I, I wasn't paying attention when I started the game, as is my way, and kind of button mash just to get into game, just to see, you know, I wasn't really going to be putting a lot of time in it that day. Not until I came back to sit down and give it a thorough play. Uh, yeah, I probably spent the first 20 minutes trying to find a way to optimize that weird two-player split-screen mechanic at the same time. I'm like, how does this work? I'm not really <laughs> rocking this. I'm going to have to go back and play a tutorial. It seems silly, but, you know, I did finish the first couple of stages like this. I did. Uh, then, this afternoon, I pressed X on the keyboard and realized that it's not a two-player. You have to control two people at the same time. No. No, no, no. I, it was a derp moment because, uh, yeah, out of the box with the X-Loon controller, player one and player two input, yeah, that bug, remember? Yeah, you mm-hmm. were selecting player one and player two with one controller ran into that smash that proton button bam and it goes away but since i was going to do it anyway that's what i did and i played it with proton it worked out of the box these two will tell you other interesting ways to go about fixing that particular problem but let's talk about the fun real quick who remembers speedrunners because you know that was a cutthroat multiplayer running game for players and uh locally and or online well quest for grawl does mostly the same thing but with hipster pixel graphics which is good that's fun you know, you run from point A, you run to point B, you throw shot at each other, and it gets in the way of other players. Really, it's genuinely, surprisingly a good time. It's a fun mechanic when you mix power-ups and environment hazards and all that. There's even a dodgeball game kind of buried inside of Grawl, which you might not even notice there, but it, it, it's genuinely a bit of fun. But I hope you have a house full of people, because uh, you better have them on hand, I should say. Local-only multiplayer with a remote play kind of band-aid slapped on the side of the tin. That, that gives me the sads, man, because, you know, getting a group of people together after the release of Dark Phoenix has been challenging. Because, yeah, you know. But I'm going to say, you know what, pick it up if you're hopeful that the end times do not, like, stay in place. That they, they're not going to be on the way, man. If you enjoy playing against AI opponents, also, give it a think. Maybe bring it into your house. But, but, maybe you just want to check on the periodic state of remote play which mm, might not be good might not be good but at the end of the day it's a cute game it's a fun game gets proper online multiplayer support built into it and we'd be playing it this afternoon this evening it's built on godot godot and uh yeah that that's the only womp womp for me but yeah at 9.99 maybe sort of want this would be a three-chair game if uh i could play on multiplayer because remote play together is not a solution sorry not sorry. Yeah. yeah. On Fedora 35, 64 bit. Uh, I tested this on two different systems. I tested it on a system with an 8150 uh, AMD and a RX 580. And I also tested it on the R9 3900X with the GTX 1080 Ti. Both cases launched out of the box in a very, very tiny window. Uh, you do have to turn off Steam input if you want to play with a controller. So this is not verified for deck. But, 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 if you do turn off um, Steam input, I tested local multiplayer because I have a child and a spouse in the house that um 
are willing to play video games with me sometimes uh, if I'm not too obnoxious about it. So uh, I connected a, it's it's the old ass, it's not the F310, it's the one before that, uh, that has the numbers on it. Um, that wired Logitech controller, a wired 360 and a Bluetooth uh, DualShock 4. And yeah, everything was happy. So uh, in terms of multiplayer like controller support, that's all good. Uh, the sprite design is very clear, minimal character blindness, although that Steam input thing in retrospect will probably make the remote play shit not work. Um, yeah. Um, yeah. So, uh, sprite design is very clear. Minimal character blindness. The soundtrack's all right. No cloud saves either, by the way. So that's uh, that's a ding against you. Fun wise, it's a fun little speedrunner. I'll give it that. It's a little more directly PvP than you know speedrunners proper. Uh, and the addition to of shared bad guys is a nice improvement on the formula. I, I like that. I like having the singular goal over the screen, just like constantly diminishing, and it just becomes this fucking cutthroat Iron Man race to see who can ju- out juke the other one. Um, and yeah, it's 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 pretty fun. There's uh, ample power ups you can. Henshin into uh, various armored forms. Uh, there are items. Uh, there's lots of modes, lots of maps and characters to unlock. But then there's the elephant in the room. There's holy fucking shit, people. Online multiplayer. You need to include it in your multiplayer game in 2022. It is fucking inexcusable at this point. Maybe, maybe remote play could work when you're sitting two meters away from the person on the same fucking Wi-Fi. Or if you set up like a USB-C to Ethernet, you can make a little Gabe link cable. I don't, I don't know. Uh, <laughs> but not in an internet setting. That, that shit does not fly. You're getting two chairs because you're missing that critical part. The, the gameplay is solid. You have a good game here. You just need people to fucking play it with. Yeah, yeah, and the, the the developers were really keen on the whole. Uh, you should uh, totally play it with remote play together. Yeah, no, we'll get to that. Uh, over here on the Horizon Seven Thirty Seven Hundred X with the GTX Ten Eighty, it launches out of the box. Yeah, there's two resolutions. It's seven twenty p teeny tiny window or whatever your monitor does. Uh, either way, it's capped at sixty FERPs. The Dual Shock and the Dual Sense. Um, they almost work properly, but not really. And if you enable Steam input, then you'd get to the uh, two-player input, like Ven mentioned earlier. Well, oh man, that's some I thought time this shit. was fixed. It, yeah, it, it, I thought this was fixed. Come on, the the only controller that I had that worked properly out of the box was uh, the Biomonk S4, which is like a clone um, Xbox 360 controller. And it just gets seen as an Xbox 360 controller, so that worked. The um, the graphics and the sounds, well, if you're looking at the uh, video version, you can see the graphics. They do a very good job, even when you can't see your character because of the explosions or particle effects or whatever. It, it does a very good job of telling you exactly where your character is because your camera tries to keep it uh, in the center without being stiff and stilted like some games do where they lock onto your character and the moment you so much as jiggle, the camera freaks the hell out. Not here, which is good. But then there's the fun and like Van and Jordan already mentioned, you need proper online multiplayer because remote play together for a game like this, speedrunners type of situation, uh, the input latency is going to be a killer. Yes, uh, you can play it in forever alone mode against the bots uh, like you're seeing in the video there, but that's going to have a very, very limited life uh, with only the amount of content that's there. If you have a game like this, you very much want to play it with your friends. You want to play it with people uh, because it's a lot more fun. I was not that big a fan of um, speedrunners, but I didn't hate it either, Uh, but it was fun playing it with everyone. Um, That was very, very fun here. Well, it's, it's, uh, it's a lot easier to play with other people over the internet. And it's a lot easier to like a game when someone isn't feeling the input latency. So honestly, I don't hate, um, quest of Graal DX either. Uh, but <laughs> it, it, it's not as good as it otherwise could be with proper online multiplayer. So it gets two chairs. <laughs> I got, I got a question about the DX thing. Does that mean that if you run this on a regular game boy, it'll work? Cause that's uh, what DX meant. 
I mean, it does seem to have the amount of uh, pixels on screen <laughs> that you could, in theory, do that with some optimization, I, maybe. I want to play this. Now, a couple <laughs> of things we know. This is not the first time um, we've tangoed with a game that was built using Godot. So we know the controller thing is not a Godot issue. And yeah. we've... <laughs> have we had any... Um, I don't know what the situation is, like, far as ease of setting up... Uh, Online um, multiplayer in Godot. I mean, Unity, it's like laughable, like if you don't include it in your title, but I don't know what the story is with Godot. I assume. I don't know. Want, someone's want, already back, has it like a pre baked one us. that you can download in Godot. But, or uh, or maybe, maybe we can. You know what? Alex would probably fucking know that yeah, he's know actively what? Yes. working yeah. in Godot. <laughs> so he, he would probably be the person to actually ask about that. You know, just watching Pedro plays, this like, would be dope as hell to play in the after show. And you're wondering, you know, I'm sure. The developer is going to be watching this. Um, I'm in North America. I'm in the United States. Jordan is in Canada, and Pedro is in Britannia. So, yep, yeah, remote. This is going to be a little bit of latency. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> <It's>, <laughs> the input latency is a killer. It, it really is, especially for this kind of game where you're literally trying to be faster than everyone else. It's very hard to do that when you have. And I want to bring this up. A second Jordan, delay. You go first. <laughs> I, I, I just, I just want to give this game a little bit of praise. The fucking directional arrow in, as part of the UI, super nice because mm-hmm. mm-hmm. there's a problem in speedrunners where if you're very unfamiliar with a map, you will take a wrong turn because you don't know what the fuck to go. That can but like ha- having a little bit of guidance of being like, okay, I just need to be heading in this direction right. is. It's super nice from a UI perspective. Yes, 100%. And, you know, being able to play this is something like maybe this will get added. Maybe it's something worth looking into. And I will say as somebody who streams games, um, remote play together is also a nightmare for streamers because oh, yeah, it will generate like the full audio screen scene. Or bus. Yeah, yeah, so full yeah. screen. Like, it's just, if you're wondering how come you're not getting a lot of traction on Twitch and then maybe YouTube to a lesser extent is, yeah, because people don't want to just race against the AI constantly. You want to have, like, this is a party game. This is a group thing. This is where you get on people on Discord. You, you, should, bring you, them need, in. you need shit talk. Yeah, exactly. Yes. And remote play It, it is very much is a multiplayer game like at that. heart. <laughs> yeah. And, and yeah, you it, need it, proper it, it, multiplayer to do it. <laughs> Yeah, in, in 2022, if you are designing a multiplayer game, and this is a multiplayer game, this is designed to be played with other people mm-hmm. as in a competitive setting. Uh, yeah, you need to include online play. I think that is like non-optional anymore, like mm. period. Yep. All right. All right, coming up next, you wouldn't download a deck. Well, we got you. We asked you that question last week. We got some feedback. So, uh, <laughs> yeah. We have been freed from uh, reporting Bondage. on the Linux gaming news for another week. I mean, we'll be back next Saturday. That's kind of how this goes. But if you'd like to, you know, drop us a line, uh, give us some hate mail do we, for do we the play next that Saturday at, like, show. Wake or I'm, I'm a flamingo. No, no, no. Pedro <laughs> like saying we'll be back next week. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, sure. I mean, yes. If you want to, uh, we will be back. Tickle. Pedro's corpse will be desecrated <laughs> and put in front of a camera. Well, so I'm just thinking about up. like the positive and negative, like flying to Portugal to like play that, like at the back. <laughs> Might not be on, safe. on, bag, on bagpipes Fuck yeah. badly. <laughs> <laughs> I know somebody to do the background music for me, and he's good with electronic beats. <laughs> If you have suggestions for the background music to use for my wake, don't send those through the contact form. The spam golem kind of frowns on URLs. But if you read the caveats at the top of the contact page on LinuxGameCast.com, it actually tells you what you need to do in order to get around that. But if you don't have URL and you just have some hate mail you want to shout at us, LGC Weekly is the topic you want to bring up. Give us your name, your email, a subject, and the message proper, and away you go. And someone actually did. We did. We got a nice little piece about <laughs> prosthetic dicks. Yes. <laughs> yeah, yeah. If you if you want to make your own, uh, Arthur and he's 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 always submitting stuff to the show, and he says, yes. "I wonder how many Chinese bootleg consoles will be made with the 3D printed chassis and sold on eBay as legit Steam Deck." What's your guess? Clue also, number one that you might not have a legit Steam Deck. Label. It's yeah, to- yeah. totally real <laughs> Steam Deck, you guys. It's gotta say totes <laughs> legit or it's gotta. Yeah, no, with, with a bunch of like thumbs up emojis too. Like, yeah, it's 
Uh, also, Deck of Steel <laughs> needs to happen with something something resembling love. Artharon, Artharon. Yes. Yeah. Honestly, I don't think the um, Chinese like uh, off-brand uh, makers will try the to Steam pass decks. it off as a legit Steam Deck. Yeah, they'll probably change the name slightly, like they do with the iPad. That's actually E Y E Steam, Steam Doc. Pad. Steam yeah. Duck. <laughs> Stem Duck. Or Stem Deck. <laughs> yeah. Stoom Deek. No, yeah, exactly. Because that, that's how it'll be e- labeled. eBay on will Amazon, crack down yes. on them if they do. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Any, anytime I see open and close brackets right there, it's like, that's ah, shipping from Hong Kong. Um, yes. <laughs> I, it's going to be exciting. Just, to, I mean, listen, all of us, we're going to be heading over to like AliExpress and Baidu. We're going to be looking for these things for the comic relief of it. And probably, probably, I mean, guaranteed, you're going to get like the uh, Kitty Cat Extreme Sparkle Edition uh, with yes. RGB. This is someone just, yeah, like third party. Do you, do you, th- uh, you think someone's going to make like a, yeah. you think someone's <laughs> going to make like a solid gold deck? Hi, Linus. Um, <laughs> Here's the thing, though. No, you think about it, like Gamers Nexus. They picked up the um, like the sparkly video cards, like the Kitty Cat cards and shit like that. The anime mm-hmm. waifu cards. That's gonna happen with Steam Deck, kit, and those are gonna be at All least right. entertaining to see, right? Yeah, and uh, absolutely. That uh, one of the things that I ho- do hope comes out of it is the ability to customize your deck, not just aesthetically, but also physically. Like, say, people who don't have the same. Um, symmetrical hands as the case may be <laughs> well you know just saying <laughs> here, here's my thing major i was thinking like oh it'd be int- <laughs> this is my brain I was like you you don't do any type of wood carving maybe you could carve your own like wood day oh like, like 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 a wood deck yeah yeah be, then i started thinking okay. about like the more than the sharper than razor it. blades uh <laughs> with, like yeah. the carving and then i'm like no I, let's keep all my digits <laughs> Man, uh, no, I'm, 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 I want to see like the fucking homebrew decks, right? I want to see what people can like cram in there, um, like with, with like uh, Raspberry Pis or uh, fully like, custom hardware. Yeah, I yeah. want, I want <laughs> yeah. a hipster deck for. I want one that has a. It's gonna be about that thick, but it's gonna have a CRT, a little baby CRT inside of it. <laughs> yeah, like, like you, you, you can, you can go nuts. You with flip it, on like, the power and it goes. Psh- yeah, <laughs> yeah. It just slowly cooks your eyes. Like, like, like I said, I'm still, I'm still looking forward to the report on the brain damage that we all have from like staring at CRT TVs for purple. Yeah, yeah right. <laughs> oh, is that what gave us all ADHD? Okay, uh, right, cool. <laughs> no. just, just the brain damage, 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 damage. Oh man. Damage, damage, damage. Uh, yeah, I mean, this is probably a very interesting time to have a 3D printer. Which you know what I. You know what's a good now is the time, dude. Dude, man, I actually found one thing where this brings it up to two that I need a 3D printer for. Was um, I didn't even think about this printing low profile brackets for cards. Mm -hmm. It's like fuck, like the back IO bits. Yep, because I just ordered (laughs) some Melanox cards on eBay, and um, because they were super cheap and they didn't have the low profile adapters. Like, and I had to order those from fucking Hong Kong, which will be here sometime, <laughs> hopefully before twenty whatever. And that's like twenty twenty five. Yeah, that's a, that's a conservative estimate. What you weren't going to do just the card plugged into the thing dangling slightly? <laughs> no, Pedro, because they're, dangle, they're, dangle. they're here to replace like the cards in these boxes that are supposed to be like good. <laughs> not like so, yeah. so you, you put a little duct tape over over the over the holes it's mm-hmm. fine yeah, yeah. <laughs> around the connectors yeah there yeah, you man, go. i just <laughs> grill them in place it's a nice and stiff yeah. Yeah. Oh. yeah don't do as we say and absolutely <laughs> don't do as we do all right everyone uh that's gonna do it i think it's probably time to uh maybe cue some music where's my cursor Get off my lawn. Where is my it's mouse? Gone. Mar- Martha, where did my cursor go? You can always find Why'd us say that name? around uh, 8.30 Eastern Standard Time. Tap that Twitch <laughs> button with a schedule or something like that, and it'll tell you in your current local time. Same thing as the uh, events in our Discord. Come hang out with me. I'll be back Tuesday for some fresh tracks and track mania. We'd love to have you there. It's a shit-talking session of hugs. Really, it's what it is. And uh, again on Friday. And Jordan will be back with Cybertruck on yeah. thursday and wednesday i'll be uh-huh. back with the jill for weekly daily wednesdays and of course we'll be back here saturday uh with this nonsense hopefully with an alive pedro if not you, we might be doing live remote from <laughs> portugal 
Who knows? Depends <laughs> yeah. on how quick they can move the body. At Ven Stone on Twitter, <laughs> at Ven on mass.linuxemcast.com. There we go. Plugs. I'm Jordan. I confuse people by saying who know people named Martha by saying Martha and just making them very, very upset generally. You can find me doing that on Twitter at The Burning Fool or screaming Martha at twitch.tv slash Burning Martha. Martha! <laughs> and for an entire segment of people, I think I am the definition of the white Portuguese. But uh, if you don't care about that, go on Twitter and... <laughs> And uh, follow me at unaccounted for. Do I look for, like a ship? Uh, <laughs> spoilers. Uh, the uh, yeah, the uh, that that's the best way to uh, get in touch with me. Credits. <laughs> Please put us out of our misery. <laughs> look okay, at that. this is brand Movie new. Whoa, whoa. We gotta thank our advisors, Omega Star Theron, and going so fast, executive producers, all this prepared. Scott Show, Chris Max Dog, Top Guest Mike G, Empty, Drummer, Kaku, George, and uh, Abstraction, Jack Wing, 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 Jack <laughs> Maybe they, uh, how? They, they they might be salted to taste for next week, but listen, <laughs> let's call that proof of concept. It can be done. Yeah, the testing in production. Yeah, <laughs> we'll see you next week. Bye bye. Bye bye. Five dudes. <laughs>